How are you doing folks? I felt like doing a Ouija board collection video. Now I don't have that many Ouija boards, but I have enough for a collection video. So I'm just going to show you each board and tell you a little bit about it. Now I'm a big proponent of the Ouija board. It's one of my favorite divinatory tools. Um, I think a lot of people, unfortunately, are afraid of Ouija boards. They have some uh, Ouija phobia. The only dangerous thing about Ouija boards are the potential splinters. So I'm here to say, don't fear the Ouija. So this here is perhaps my favorite Ouija board. This is a replica of the 1920s Ouija board. It has some information on the back there, some directions about how to play that was on the original board, and it's replicated here. This is the Ouija board I used in my Halloween seance video. And this is the planchette of the 1920s Ouija board replica. The way the Ouija boards work is you put the planchette on the board and then multiple people will press their hands upon it lightly and it will eventually, through the idiomotor effect, will begin to move. And whatever it moves on, you can read aloud and it can give yes or no answers. And my viewpoint is that that is psychological, it is um, the subconscious, and that anything you get from it comes from the minds of the individuals who are playing. Uh, I still leave open the possibility that it could be paranormal in some way, in a parapsychological manner. But this right here, the planchette, definitely moves by the hands. There's no hands on it, it doesn't move. It moves via the micro-movements of the people's hands, and that is either inspired in some way, or it comes from the subconscious, or perhaps those two things are one and the same. So either way, this is the 1920s Ouija board replica. This is perhaps my favorite one. And here we have the Ouija board that most people are probably familiar with. This is basically the same one that's been sold for a long period of time. Ouija boards are kind of the culmination of all the seance practices from the letter calling, where they had letters and they would point to them and they would ask the spirits to make a knocking noise, to point each letter and stuff like that and also the planchette, because planchettes uh, originally also had a pen or pencil that would go here, and it would write out the thing on its own. And there have been multiple books published via this form. It's called automatic writing. And so people can use a Ouija board to write a book or have a pen or pencil there, and it can draw pictures or write out its own thing. And there have been multiple books written in that style, it's called automatic writing. Uh, similar thing is automatic speech, which is kind of like what the Pentecostals do when they sort of let the spirit flow through them and they say whatever comes to mind, that's automatic speech. Automatic writing is like that, but it's with uh, either a planchette or just with a pen or pencil in the hand, and they let the spirit flow through them and they write whatever uh, the spirit tells them to write. And I see no reason why it would be impossible to write something from the subconscious or to write something uh, with the micro movements of the hand, but it does take a long time. It's a very slow process. And if you're a skeptically minded person, I'm sure you're aware that sometimes people will attribute a message or a book to automatic writing when it was just normally written. But yeah, many things have been attributed to the Ouija board. Many messages and names and all kinds of things have been attributed to the Ouija board. It's a sort of a fun thing where all these different people feel so they're influenced by the Ouija board and you kind of wonder like how much of this is those people just attributing it to uh, spiritual beings and how much of it is actually people using the Ouija board and uh, using it to come up with ideas. Because it, it is a good way to come up with ideas if you're trying to come up with something and you know maybe something doesn't come to mind, maybe it will come to mind through the subconscious. Uh, many people have messages or ideas coming to them in dreams. Uh, you can think the same thing here or through trance mediumship, going into a trance, the same thing here, putting the hands upon the planchette can make you go into a trance and perhaps bring forth something that is in the subconscious. So Ouija boards are a very useful tool and uh, a very interesting tool and it's a, it's a shame that people mostly think of them as either stupid or scary when they are, you know, something really fascinating, I think. But it really is just a fun sort of novelty and in some ways a possible way of communicating with the spiritual world. Of, you know, bring messages that come from somewhere, be it the subconscious, be it the divine, whatever. There's some sort of communication going on there, and I find it fascinating what comes out. I find it fascinating what 
the board comes up with when people put their hands upon the planchette. Uh, the Ouija board the, is a brand name, so there's the spirit board, the talking board, just generally, but Ouija board is a brand name, and that was uh, attributed to William Fold. I think the descendants of him eventually sold the, the company to Parker's Brothers, who then sold it to Hasbro, so currently it is owned by Hasbro, I believe, but, you know, it is just a board that has a, a piece that moves, so anyone could make them, they just wouldn't call it a Ouija board, it's a talking board or a spirit board, it's a, it's a genre, and there are a lot of, um, you know, right now there's a lot of home made Ouija boards, and you could go on, you know, artisan places and people make them, so there's a lot of custom Ouija boards right now, we, we live in the age of the custom Ouija board. This is the one that many people will be familiar with, this is sort of the classic, right? So this is the one, um, it's Hasbro, but the, um, the Parker's Brothers one is like this, it looks the same, but it is uh, a larger one, so it's a little bit larger than this, is more, uh, I guess, portable. This is the planchette, plastic, the window there, it looks through, is also plastic. I think in the older ones they were very similar, but I think there might have been glass, and there was like a pin. That's the, that's the only thing that would be dangerous about a Ouija board, is that little pin there, but now it's plastic, so there's no danger of poking your finger there. And this one is, uh, you know, it's board, so it's not wooden, so no danger of splinters there. So there you go. The Ouija board went through many different uh, iterations. In, at one point it was called the Egyptian luck board. People were really into Egypt because there was a lot of discoveries going on at the time, so people were really into ancient Egypt. And so a lot of things got attributed to ancient Egypt. Uh, the tarot, which is a French card game, eventually got attributed to ancient Egypt. And uh, the Ouija board was uh, called the Egyptian luck board for a while because that's what people were interested in. And then it changed more and more, and now I guess the, the current uh, interest in the Ouija board would be it being scary or uh, similar to a movie about the board or something like that. And so there are tons of different versions of the Ouija board, but this is the one I think most people are familiar with. There's also like the, the glow-in-the-dark one and things like that, but most of them kind of uh, parrot this design. And here's a, a fun one. This is the Deluxe Ouija board, and this was like a, some limited time thing they had for uh, Halloween. It's similar, but it has a darker tone to it and an interesting design. And the whole idea was that it was uh, Deluxe, so it's more sturdy, more wooden, and the planchette on the board is also very fancy and wooden, so you see here. So a design that is kind of drawing reference to the old school spiritualists in the seances of the Victorian age, because there is some swirly looking Victorian age stuff there. And it also draws reference to um, the Ouija board as sort of like an occultic item. And we have here some palmistry, a little palm there with like the eye and the, the way of reading it and all the different uh, occultic symbols. So drawing reference there, this is uh, divination, because using the planchette to get automatic writing or automatic messages, be it just with the planchette or with the board or with a pendulum or what have you, all of that is divination. Putting a, a pin in your hand and just waiting for it to move, uh, putting a glass on a table and moving it around, but maybe get a piece of paper and write something and have it move in different directions. All of that is divination, as is reading tea leaves, dowsing rods, all these things are divination. Ouija board is just uh, sort of a board form of that divination. Uh, instead of writing out, it points to letters, so it's easier. And like I said, it draws reference to a lot of seance stuff with the letter calling. So it's just a fancier version, fancier Ouija board that came out Halloween one year. You can see there it says Hasbro Gaming right there, so it's owned by Hasbro currently. Uh, and some people think the Ouija board is more of a board game, but you know, it's not really like Monopoly, it's more of a novelty that happens to be a board, more than a board game. Because a game has like rules, and has people can win or lose, and you know, this is not really much of a game, it's more of a novelty. So, yeah, there's that. And I think people think there are rules on the Ouija board because it's a board game, but that comes from like movies and other things like that. There are no, the, the original Ouija board and talking boards as a whole, there's no rules to them, it's not a thing, but you can come up with your own, you can sort of, if whatever makes you feel comfortable, you can use whatever rules you want, but uh, there's no actual rules. So like I said, I'm a big proponent and a big fan of the Ouija board, I enjoy them, I like using them, I advocate that other people use them, I think they're cool, and like I said, could be 
strictly psychological, could be just your mind, playing tricks on you, novelty, or it could be parapsychological, some spiritual being or spiritual force interfacing with the mind in a divinatory way or divine inspiration kind of way. And I just like the messages. I, like, I think it's cool that you can receive messages from somewhere else. That you can put your hand on a planchette and you can get a message that you don't recognize. You can get a message that doesn't feel like it came from you, but it probably did. So, there's that. The one thing, however, that sucks is trying to convince people to play Ouija board with you because people don't want to do that. So, here's a nice fun thing. This is a, a novelty of novelties. As I said before, there are tons of different talking boards and spirit boards. They're all customized with weird things on them, different styles, different uh, themes. These kinds of boards, there are many of them, are called angel boards. And they're made specifically for angels. They're made to communicate with angels because we don't know what we're talking to. As I said, we'd be talking to our subconscious, we'd be talking to the divine, the spirit world. And so some people have different frameworks, different viewpoints, different ways of contextualizing and reconciling the messages. And so some people would want to say, oh, they're angels because people don't want to talk to spirits or whatever. So, or they don't want to consider themselves like psychic, they don't want to consider it a psychic manifestation. So they're like, that's weird, so we're going to go a different direction, angels. So I have one, as I said, there are many different designs and many different variations, tons of different angel boards. This is just one of them. But I think it's interesting, the idea behind it of like, hey, let's convince people that it's okay. So this is cool because it falls in line with what I'm trying to do, which is to uh, introduce people to a Ouija board in a nicer way to get people to actually consider it as opposed to you know, fear mongering and running away from it or that sort of thing. This is an angel board, it's not the only one. This is um, probably more for like a new age crowd, but yeah, this is the one that I was able to get. And I found it interesting, there's also a prayer on the back and it says, be not alarmed, please take my hand and follow me. The celestial realm of light awaits for thee. First step upon this golden shore and I will be your guide through heaven's door. So there's a nice prayer or poem or something on the back to make people feel more comfortable. So this is, I guess, specifically to talk to angels or to have your devout Christian friend play Ouija board with you. Really, in, in all actuality, there is no difference between the two. And I mean that in the way that they are both perfectly normal, perfectly good uh, automatic writing tools. So there's no difference. And here is the planchette for the angel board. It has angel wings on it. So there you go. So that's what it's all about, is trying to make people not afraid and more comfortable with the other and the bizarre, the weird, the oddity. And speaking of oddity, this is perhaps the strangest one I have. This is a lamb board, which is the uh, creature that Aleister Crowley claimed to talk to. And there is an awk there and a symbol from Crowley's Thalema. And beneath it is the spelling and reverse spelling of the entity's name. As this is a very compact board, I kind of liked it because it was so specific. Like, that's a very specific thing to have a board dedicated to. It's a, a wood burn, so it's burned into the, the wood there. And so this is probably the one that would freak out most people because, uh, you know, it's Alistair Crowley and that sort of thing. But I just like the uh, lamb there because he looks like an alien. It's like a gray. And I just thought it was a cool one. I thought it was a very obscure and unique one. I'm always looking for very obscure and unique looking Ouija boards. It also has the number associated with the entity. And so yeah, I think that most people probably try to use this to talk to that specific being. I thought that was cool that someone would have a board to talk to a specific entity as opposed to just talking to anyone. Kind of cool for the, for the collection. Here is the planchettes. There's a tiny planchette in the heart shape. And yes, the Ouija board planchette is a heart shape. It's actually a little heart shape because the Ouija board loves you. It has a heart shape, so you gotta, gotta love the Ouija board. Love for the oddity there, don't fear the Ouija. And here is sort of a, a more circular one, it's kind of cool. And uh, this one has a bunch of astrology symbols on it. I also like this one says uh, farewell instead of goodbye. So as I said before, people have what they consider to be rules, which are really more customs, things that they feel they have to do when they use the Ouija board. You know, don't use it in a graveyard, but that's kind of just like a thing to be polite, because some people believe that what they're talking to is the spirits of the dead, and they don't want to wake people, so that's kind of the cute little idea people have there. And then another idea people have is uh, you always have to say goodbye. So you swipe it over goodbye, but that's, once again, 
not really a rule, but just kind of a, a nice polite thing to do. So these kind of rules uh, sort of come into existence as people use the board and have things they feel like they have to do, uh, typically from politeness. You know, it's a, a funny little custom. I'm sure that applies to any, you know, sort of divinatory tools, like maybe some peril investigators who might not want to use their scan radios in, in a graveyard because they feel they'll wake the dead or whatever, but that is um, a custom that people have come up with. This here is a bit of a weird one. This is the deluxe Ouija board pillow. So it's a pillow, but it's designed specifically on that deluxe board that was from a Halloween store. I've seen Ouija board pillows that are of the uh, traditional Ouija board, but this one's of the deluxe one. I thought it was kind of unique. And so I continue to collect Ouija boards. I continue to try to find unique ones and weird ones. And if there are people out there who have them who don't want them anymore, I would gladly put those in my collection and give those a good home. It's also uh, collecting something that people feel has an energy to it. It's collecting something that people feel has uh, some sentimentality to it. The same with collecting haunted items. You're collecting something that people have uh, experiences with, you know, and sentimentality to. You're collecting something that has a story to it. You're collecting something that has lived a life before you and something that you can continue to use and have your own story with. So it'd be like collecting paintings that you can play, you know, something that moves. And so I think it's a really interesting thing to collect. The last board, of course, is a Mothman Ouija board. And this one is perfect for all you mountaineers, all you Appalachian Oddity fans out there. This is from the Mothman Festival. And it is just sort of a custom made, you know, piece of folk art there. It's um, clearly a, uh, like a cutting board that someone has designed to be Mothman. And the planchette here is very fancy. It has uh, marbles on the bottom of it so that it glides very smoothly. So I thought that was a cool thing. You can kind of take anything, put marbles on it, and it will, it will move. So you can really make anything into a planchette. And like I said, you can also use glass, uh, like a glass or a shot glass or a uh, candle holder or anything like that. This one says, called Mothman, and it has a Mothman eye. Uh, this one was a bit hard to use though because it's clearly like a wooden heart that someone has used for a custom board. Uh, if you try to use it, there's actually no hole here. So it's just an eye. So you wouldn't be able to see through. So you wouldn't be able to specifically pick. So I guess you could maybe use this for the pointing, for like point each thing, or just kind of guess what it's over. So this is kind of a hard planchette to use. I definitely prefer these kinds of planchettes where you can just do that, or the glass planchettes, or these kinds of circular ones where you pretty much would always know what it's on because there's nothing to get in the way there. And, and with glass, you can uh, see through. If it's a glass planchette, you can see through and there's really no ambiguity there. So. I like the, uh, the glass planchettes the best, and they kind of slide around the easiest, is the glass planchettes. But this is, of course, the classic. So that's been my Ouija board collection. I'm always on the lookout for new Ouija boards. And if any of you out there are afraid of Ouija boards, first of all, don't be. But second of all, if you have one that you're afraid of or that you want to get rid of, contact me. Other than that, you can check out some more cool oddities in Appalachian lore at AppalachianOddity.org. So thanks for watching. Don't fear the Ouija. As always, mountaineers are always free.